Welcome. Today we're going to be looking at practice sets, which is a feature in Google Workspace for Education Plus, and you can find that in Google Classroom. We're going to go on the Classwork tab and go to Create, and we go to Assignment, and here you can see practice sets as a new feature. It's been around for a little while, but it is constantly evolving. If we click on the practice sets, it brings up a screen that's got existing practice sets that I can access and reuse or I can go into and create a new practice set. I'm going to go through my examples a bit later and show you how I created them and the pluses and minuses involved in that process. So with practice sets we can click on new practice set and then it gives us the opportunity to create this. So I'm going to call this my example and then we want to insert our question. Now when we insert our question, we've got a number of different options. We've got the short answer by default, but we can also add paragraph, single select and multi-select options. Similarly to Google Form, the short answer, single select and multi-select can be automatically marked, but the paragraph would have to be marked uh, manually. So if we choose our question type, and then we're going to input our question. So we're going to paste our question in here and then we're going to put the answer in here. As you can see, it's already actually come up with a suggestion, so I can click on that and it's going to put it in there. It doesn't always come up with a suggestion, you might have to put that in yourself. Now what I'm wanting to see now is if it's going to give me some resources, and this is what the power of practice sets is as an alternative to Google Forms. Now it's not coming out with anything automatically, otherwise this light bulb would light up and there wouldn't be a cross. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to type in Henry the eighth and see what comes up so you can see nothing's come up so I'm going to put in another word and this is what we might experience is some of the AI functionality isn't bringing up the resources we want so therefore we need to put this in ourselves so to do this I'm going to click on the down arrow here to expand the resources I'm going to click on the plus here you can insert a hint or a YouTube video so in this case I'm going to do a YouTube video I'm going to put in the link, search for that, and it's going to bring up the video I want and click add video. I did try to do it with YouTube where it gives you the link for a precise timing in the video and put that in, but it didn't like that and it always just played it from the beginning. So I've got my question, my answer and a resource in there. I could hit another one in there and put a hint and I could say remember the rhyme. If you don't know that one it is divorce beheaded died divorce beheaded survived and we click save and it's put that in there once I'm done with my question obviously I can add more questions in I can click the plus to add a new question a text box so I can insert it here so we are learning about the Tudors we've got some options there or again, if I click the plus, another option is import, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. If I'm happy with my questions, I can click try as a student, check it all works out, and how they're going to see it. So as a student, I can just put in my answer here. So I could put in six, and it's going to allow me to check. Now I can click on the show a hint. So let's do that first. Remember the rhyme. And so I'm going to say, imagine we put in eight, because I think that's why it was called Henry the Eighth. No, we're going to check. The rhyme didn't help. Let's try again. And this time it's shown me the video. So it's worth checking the order of the resources we put in to see which way we want them to come out. I do have over here a toolbar that I can use to show my work. So I can here, I can select a pencil, I can write. Now this is obviously better if it's done on the actual writing panel. I can embed graph paper, I can minimize work, and I can go full screen. So this is more relevant if you're doing maths equations or something scientific that you might need to write out. I'm going to try again here, change my arrow, put in six, I'm going to check this. It's given me that as a correct answer and some lovely confetti to celebrate my achievement. So I'm going to go back into my classroom. As I say, you might want to move these around. Say, well, let's move that here. I want the video first. 
But once I'm happy with this, I can finish editing and that's saved. If I wanted to add this onto my classroom now, I can click attach. And then we can see it's added into my classroom. I've got my practice set. I can obviously adjust all the settings over on the right hand side. I'm going to click sign. But I'm going to do another example to show you another feature and with a maths question this time. So I'm going to go into practice sets, new practice sets. So this time we're going to use the import function. So I'm going to click insert and go to import. And this is where we can access a PDF. I'm going to upload this. We can access it and then take a snapshot off of that PDF and put it in as our question. The key is to find the correct type of question that you want. So I'm going to scroll down and find something that's relevant. There you go. This is a good one that I've used previously. I'm going to select this, select the area. So that's one question. I can go through and then select another one. So let's do this one. And I'm going to import these questions. What you might see is that they are cut off a little bit here, but that's okay. They'll appear okay when you finish editing. So I'm going to put in my correct answer. Now for this, I'm going to need the maths tool because the answer is 10 and a half. So I'm going to toggle the maths tool. I'm going to put in my 10. Then I'm going to have to use my half. So it's one. And then I have to click down here. Oh, two. And that's my correct answer. Again, it's not picked up any of the skills, so I could put in fractions, but again, it's, I think it's going to struggle to find a skill that will match this. So we're going to leave that for now. Then we can look at this one. And again, this would be maybe a paragraph answer that I'm expecting a longer piece. The skill we're looking at is whole numbers. Again, it's not identifying a skill that I would really want. Just an introduction to whole numbers is what I'm looking for. So it's all a bit more complex. So as you can see, the skill side hasn't really come through. Um, I'll show you some of my examples where that has worked though. So again, once I'm happy with this, I'm going to finish editing. So I'm going to attach this. and then assign it in the classroom. So I'm going to jump over to my student view and the student can see the two I've put in here. So we're going to go into this one, click on the practice X. It's going to load this up and I can put in my answers here. So again, imagine I got this wrong. I'm going to check. I'm going to click on a hint but I've now remember the rhyme and I'm going to put the right answer in. That's correct. Happy with that. And now I can hand it in. Now I'm going to go back into my classroom and do the second example. So here I would have to go in. Oh, it's left quite a big gap there. That's interesting. I'm going to use my maths keyboard and I'm going to insert this click down on this for the second number and if I'm happy with that that's great I'm happy with that I can check it and it's told me I've got that right and in this one I need to put some text in once I'm happy with that I'm going to click done wait for it to save that's saved and now I'm going to hand in and jump back to our teacher mode I'm going to click on this example, review the work. And over here, it's going to give me some insights on this question. So on this question as well, what it would tell me about the students is that they took an extra attempt to solve this. On the maths example, again, I'm going to review the work, click on the student. So it's given me the answer here, so that's correct. Now this one, I would have to review myself and then I can say correct or incorrect. So that's a manual marking. If I'm happy with this, I can put the score in there and then return that to the student. 
Now we're going to go back and have a look at some of the other practice sets I created. And I can do this by going onto the resources option here, and it's going to bring up my practice sets as well as other resources I have in Google Classroom. So here are some examples, and I'm just going to talk you through them. So quickly going on to the phonics example. So it's saying which word has the sound, so I'm going to edit this. And just to show you, this is a video that it brought up, and this did bring up the video automatically. I didn't have to search for it and brought up the same vowel sounds. So that was encouraging because this is quite a younger age group, so it shows you can use this with the younger age group as well. The computer science, okay, I'm going to edit this. So if I look down on this, I, it didn't bring up the video, so I had to find something for that on that. So I did search for something on computing storage devices or internal storage, didn't bring up anything. And the same here, it didn't really bring up anything on internet protocols. So all it's done is added in some basic videos on what is the internet. We've already seen an example that I did from the year six maths, again with this one, very similar ones. I didn't get any joy with any of the skills on that. Literacy example, so I took a question from Beowulf, which is a very common book read in the UK. And so with this, I had to put in this resource myself. It didn't come up with anything for me. History example. So this is something about World War II, looking at the causes. Again, I didn't actually find any resources automatically, so I put in some hints myself. Geography example. So again, if I edit this, this one actually did populate itself. It brought me through a video on the earth layers. And lastly, we'll look at another maths example, simplifying the expression. So it brought through two videos for me on multiplying binomials. So there was a bit of a mixed experience really in creating these resources. Some did bring through ideas or resources for me, some didn't. And I think some of the subjects better suited the practice sets in terms of those resources than others. And some I might stick to Google Forms. I'm sure it's something that's going to grow over time as the AI improves, particularly we might see more UK centric AI coming into this as well. So hopefully this has given you an overview of how practice sets can work and some different examples of what that might look like.